Welcome to the third video about uh, the web browser embedded control. And for this uh, video we need three controls. First we need a really big form as you can see here. I've actually uh, minimized the toolbox, the solution explorer and properties pane in order to create a form big enough. And what we also need is three controls. A text box, a button, and of course the embedded web browser. Well, I've repinned the uh, panes to the IDE so we can look at these. And as you can see the text box is named text query. The button is named BNT Go. And the web browser is named WB Browser. And the URL property of WB Browser is already set to http colon slash slash bing.com. So when this comes up, we'll automatically be in bing.com. If I save this and run it, see bing.com comes up. And it turns out the embedded web browser <coughs> brings a lot of baggage along with it. And it's actually pretty useful baggage. The uh, main thing I'm talking about is DOM or the document object model. And if you've used, uh, if you've written web pages and you've used JavaScript quite a bit to make the web pages interactive with the user, you're probably really familiar with the, the document object model, although you might not know it by that name. And essentially there's uh, various inheritance paths in the uh, DOM model. For instance, uh, document inherits from node, document inherits from window, and element inherits from node. But you usually get elements from the document object. And in order to get the uh, element one of the major methods is document dot get element by ID and then an ID name and then you can have a property or a method associated with that ID name uh, and uh, different types of uh, controls or elements have different properties and methods needless to say you know text boxes and methods and check boxes and radio buttons essentially very similar to C-sharp in a lot of ways except they're usually with an angle bracket input type equals button or type equals radio and so on rather than having a something you drag over to a form. Uh, one thing you need to know about IDs is there's they're largely used for CSS for formatting purposes <coughs> And there's actually two types of thing, IDs and classes. And you usually specify an ID with a pound sign in the CSS, and then a bunch of formatting rules. And you specify a class with a dot in the CSS, and then a bunch of formatting rules. And the original intent was that IDs were supposed to be unique. There's just one ID in the page to identify something. And classes were general, like you'd have a lot of different sections of the page that are the same class name so you apply that type of formatting to all those classes but in fact they can be used totally interchangeably IDs and classes and most web pages I've seen do use them interchangeably you know you, you see IDs used multiple times on a page and classes used multiple times on a page so the original method of, of DOM, get element by ID, will only get the first ID it finds with that name, and you can't get the other IDs. So in a way, it's limited by the concept that never was really applied by actual users. So how do we find out what the IDs are on the page that we're actually loading into our, our web browser? And one way we can do that that's a really useful way that saves a lot of time is by using Google Chrome to look at the page and then using Inspect Element. 
which allows you to go right to the element that you have the cursor on and find out information about it including the ID and then once we get the ID we can retrofit that ID into our code behind for the web browser code so if I bring up uh, bing.com in a Chrome uh, Google Chrome browser and then I put the cursor on this element this text box and right click and go to inspect element you see it goes right to the place where the elements defined uh, with it highlighted and then if I double click on the ID I can uh, copy this ID to the clipboard so we can use it in our program and the main code we want to affect in this program is the seek button so if I type in WB browser dot document oops dot get element by ID and then we paste in the uh, ID we just copied to the clipboard whoops and then for the property we want to access get enter text uh, enter HTML I use a lot in JavaScript also but in this case we want to just get the enter text from that text box and actually we could set put a variable here and set the enter text equal to the variable to get what's in that box but we, we, what we really want to do is set this equal to uh, text query dot text so that the text box we have in the C sharp program oh, I don't know why I didn't get that the text box we have in the C sharp program will fill in the text box on the browser so if we save this and run it and say type in uh, I don't know Doug and type the seek you notice that it fills in the uh, value I typed in in the text box in the seat program into the text box in the browser and the next step we want to do is go back to our browser with uh, Google Chrome and go up to this button here and right click and do inspect element and once again we have an ID this time for uh, an input type that is more or less equivalent to button it's uh, actually a submit uh, ID or input and if we double click on this ID we can copy this uh, to the clipboard close this out minimize this and then go back to our code behind and say oh, it's running still okay stop running and say WB browser dot document dot kind of like the way it remembers what you did last time which says you probably want to do that again uh, get element by ID double quote and then do a paste from the clipboard of the ID we got from uh, Google Chrome and this time we want to do uh, invoke member and the name of the member we want to invoke is click So it'll not only load the uh, search text box with a value from the external text box in C, but then it'll click that button for us when we click the external button. 
So if we save and run this, say do a search for uh, Philo and hit seek. It fills it in and then pops up Philo. Philo of Alexander. I was actually thinking of uh, Philo Farnsworth who invented the television but he's probably here somewhere. Well you might ask how do we know that the member we want to evoke is named Click? And you can actually somewhat find that out from uh, Google Chrome once again. If we go here and do inspect element, and then in this element you'll notice there's a whole series of panes over on the right that are talking about this element. And you can go down to uh, I guess probably properties and uh, HTML element and you notice click is one of the major functions used for this element. So I hope you uh, enjoyed this video and learned a lot and I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe.